Net next speakers are uh, Mr. Stefan Mitch and Alexei Nogin. So could you please share your screen? Oh, that looks good. Can you say something? Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. So this will be a joint talk, right? So of, of two people, right. so if I understand this correctly. So I hope it will just work technically. Um, in any case, um, so who is now presenting? This is Stefan Mitch, is this correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Then, um, so Stefan will talk about formally verified safety net for waypoint navigation, neural net for controllers. And we're excited to hear what um, we will be learning now. And please go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Stefan Mitch, and I'm presenting um, joint work with Alexei Kopilov, Alexei Nogin, and Michael Warren of HRL Laboratories. Um, Alexei Nogin is here as well, and um, he's going to present our learning-related aspect of the um, of this work. And I'm going to talk us through the um, through the formal aspects. So let's jump right into um, our um, into into the the setup of our project. So our goal was to use reinforcement learning um, to learn ground vehicle waypoint navigation, but we want to do so with formally verified guarantees about the, um, about the motion of the car, how closely it is going to follow the, the planned waypoints. And our setup is using um, two components working together. A high level path planner um, plans waypoints that should be feasible in a sense for a low level path controller, um, path follower to, um, to follow from waypoint to waypoint. And um, feasible in this um, case means that um, the car within its steering limits needs to be able to, um, to drive from waypoint to waypoint. And the challenge in combining um, here formal verification and reinforcement learning is that we have to find a um, formal model that's detailed enough to capture um, real world the relevant real world aspect so that we can read off the reward function for learning, but it also has to be abstract enough to remain tractable for formal verification. And one aspect that's um, especially important for, for um, real world driving is that in this model, we also need to account for uncertainty in actuation and sensing. And so since we have those two components um, working together, um, the main question in building our formal model is how we can uh, find an interface and what are the conditions that connect um, that connect um, those two uh, components. Um, next point, please. And so the um, the um, conditions that we are looking for um, are describing what makes waypoints feasible to drive. We have the steering limits of the car and feasible waypoints are the ones that we can reach within the steering limits, while infeasible waypoints lie outside those steering limits. And um, our process um, that we are following is that we are building a hybrid systems model um, of this problem. We are, the planner provides waypoints as inputs and we need to identify constraints on those um, inputs that um, tell us whether waypoints are feasible or not. And then we um, design a, um, a controller that's picking steering and acceleration choices for the car, also um, subject to constraints that we identify in the proof um, that tell us what is going to be um, what are going to be safe control choices. And those safe control choices, um, from those we want to read off two things. The first one is a verified monitor that is going to tell us whether at runtime the system behaves as expected by the, um, by the model. And the second one is a reinforcement, uh, is a reward function for, for reinforcement learning so that we can actually learn how to drive the car. But the first, um, um, focus that we have in this talk now is on the bottom part where we look at the proof and the hybrid systems model. Um, so we want to um, analyze the uh, learning enabled control model and its interaction with a differential equation model that captures um, the motion of the car in terms of a Dubin's path. And on the next slide, um, we are going to um, see the main ingredients of um, that model. Um, the main, um, so what, what, what we want to characterize with our formal model is um, what it means for waypoints to be feasible. And for that, we, we need to, um, to represent um, two things. The first one is the vehicle position. 
um, and also it's heading at the waypoint. And since we want to drive um, in, in um, a real car, we will need some tolerance around those. And the same model should allow us to, um, to characterize um, feasibility in terms of the vehicle turning constraints. Our basis is a usual model that operates on um, global coordinates. Um, but the downside of that is um, that uh, it, it results in undecidable real arithmetic. So uh, representing the car's heading with an angle in, um, um, in relation to a global coordinate system is not what we want to do. We therefore um, switch to a relative coordinate system where we can um, more easily reduce the dimension to keep verification tractable, and where we also can easier um, encode sine and cosine of, uh, of angles with differential equation, it, equations themselves so that we can use um, differential equation reasoning um, to encode properties of sine and cosine instead of actually using sine and cosine in the solutions. Now, this relative coordinate system places the car at the origin and um, represents um, the steering with the sharpest possible left turn and the sharpest possible right turn. Um, but if we stick to only one point, then such a relative um, coordinate system is blind to global constraints during online monitoring. So in a, in a relative coordinate system, many um, different situations from the relative viewpoint look the same. So what we do on the next slide is um, we extend this one point model um, to uh, represent positions and headings with two points. And the main insight there is that we can use the vehicle steering limits. So the, the, the car has a sharpest left turn that it can take and a sharpest right turn that it can take. And the point L to the left of the car represents the center point of the sharpest possible left curve. And the point R to the right of the car represents the sharpest possible right turn. Um, and now we can observe that the line connecting those two points um, intersects with the longitudinal axis of the car that's pointing in the direction of the heading of the car. Um, it intersects with this lo longitudinal axis exactly at the position of the car, and it rotates with the heading of the car. So with these two points, we are now able to uniformly represent both position and orientation of the car. And the navigation task then simplifies to navigating that point L into a left goal region and the point R into a right goal region. And by inflating those regions, we are able to even um, represent tolerance for position and heading also in a uniform way. So we can uh, represent with one tolerance measure, a trade-off between um, um, how precisely we want to hit the waypoint in terms of position and how precisely we want to hit it in terms of heading. And the other important aspect about that model is that it avoids explicit angles, so the arithmetic becomes decidable. Another representation in this model is the geometric intuition of what it now means for waypoints to be feasible. Um, and um, navigation remains feasible if the right waypoint is outside the, that blue region to the left, and if the um, left um, point of the car stays outside the L infeasible region, the right region on the right. Um, and those are characterized um, with formulas and differential dynamic logic. And on the next slide, we see how they become embedded into um, a theorem. Um, we, we want to represent two um, main characteristics of this model. Um, the first one is we want to know that when the car starts, so when the, when the high-level planner hands us a waypoint, that is a feasible waypoint that our controller only takes decisions that um, keep that waypoint, reaching that waypoint feasible. And the theorem in differential dynamic logic that we are seeing on this um, slide um, states exactly that. So we have uh, as preconditions a waypoint that's feasible. Um, we assume that our learned controller is going to make a safe control choice, one of the feasible choices, and we show that under the dynamics of the Dubin's path, all the states that are reachable with this decision, decision are again such that um, the, the waypoint remains um, feasible. And now um, on the next point, we um, we expand a little bit on what it means for, for the dynam what, what the dynamics mean. Um, they take a control input for acceleration and for steering, and the differential equations um, describe how the x and y positions of that left and right point of the car are moving in relation 
um, to speed and um, difference between the steering choice and the sharpest possible curve that the car can drive. And just to give you an impression on how those predicates look like, um, the waypoint feasibility is also characterized in terms of left and right. And for example, one of the things that are encoded in this um, predicate safe state is that the car drives forward. So the, the right um, point is to the right of the left point and that the um, left region is outside that L infeasible region and similarly for the right region. Um, now this, Theorem gives us confidence that all the um, control choices are correct, but for learning, we also need to know whether there exists actually a control choice. So the second main theorem in the paper um, tells us that when we start at a feasible waypoint, um, then there are two possibilities. Either the car is already at that waypoint if it was um, planned closely enough, or there exists a steering choice that when executed fast enough, satisfies that safe control predicate. Um, and the proof about this theorem now gives us the confidence that we can actually use learning to, um, to learn how to satisfy this um, safe control constraint. And the Chimerex theorem prover that we used for conducting those proofs um, was very helpful in, in several aspects. So first of all, it allows us to analyze hybrid programs, including the differential equations in a very systematic way. And it allows us to certify results um, of untrusted and numerical tools, like um, invariant conditions about differential equations that we may find um, manually or with, with external tools, it allows us to certify those. And another very important aspect um, that we used extensively in, this, um, in, in, in these proofs is that it allows us to steer arithmetic solvers. Um, the real arithmetic that arises from analyzing those models um, is quite complicated and outside what current tools like C3 and Mathematica were able to solve by themselves. And Chimera X allowed us to decompose um, the arithmetic questions until they became tractable for those external solvers. So now the proofs are the basis for um, deriving monitors and reinforcement learning um, reward functions. And just very briefly what those monitors look like, um, they are derived with the modelplex procedure and um, characterize what it means for observations um, to fit to the expectations of the model. And if those monitors are satisfied, um, we have guarantees that the offline proofs that we conducted about the model transfer to the actual system execution that we are seeing in terms of um, observations. And a quantitative version of those, um, of, of those monitors allows us to also um, um, determine a distance to the to the um, to the boundary of that safety envelope and such a distance measure is also very important for reinforcement learning and Alexi is um, going to talk us next through how how that model was used um, to come up with reward functions and actually train a controller to do the driving perhaps a quick note that should be done in like three or four minutes yep uh, can people hear me Yes, we you perfectly. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, uh, as Stefan, um, uh, as Stefan showed you our formalization for um, uh, for how we formalize the task of um, um, of navigating to the specified location and heading is that we have this left and right points. Uh, that need to go to the point A and B that sort of simultaneously uh, constrains the location and hearing and also provides a trade-off um, between the two. So, and that gives us sort of a natural reward function where for training a neural network where we can penalize uh, for uh, uh, for being far from the uh, location and heading. And the only other thing that we do is we also penalize the vehicle for speeding. So we give it the target speed. Um, we don't explicitly encourage it to not go too slow because uh, that's already included uh, in the term that says, you know, that we don't want you to be far from the waypoint. Um, and but we penalize it for going too fast. Uh, 
And so we, uh, we had a simulation where uh, the vehicle uh, was, uh, was modeled uh, as a, um, uh, with a bicycle uh, uh, type model that also modeled uh, the, the tires and the sleep fairly precisely. And um, in, in simulation, the neural network uh, worked pretty well where we, um, as you saw, it would hit most of the waypoints very well. I think, you know, it was, you know, getting to where it can um, hit at least 99% uh, of uh, all feasible waypoints. Um, but then, so what we did next, we actually had um, you know, working with the uh, US Army GVSC, a uh, ground vehicle system center. And um, uh, we, we, uh, we tried that neural network controller on a real vehicle. Uh, and here is kind of an example of how that looked. Um, and so there, there the, the, the planner was a, a baseline planner that uh, didn't use any machine learning. And so the, the vehicle was controlled with our controller. And it didn't, you know, and it didn't really work well. As you see here, it ended up just driving uh, off road where it was trying to, uh, trying to navigate the road. Um, and uh, what we realized that there were two issues there is that um, one, that um, the, uh, there was what? too much of a- Alexei, yep. one minute, please, okay? Yep, uh, there, was too much, uh, the, there was too much of a gap between the actual vehicle and the model. And the main gap was um, in actuation delay. So the model had instantaneous steering, whereas the, the vehicle was taking too long to steer. And the other part is that the, um, our notion of feasible was, um, um, uh, was stronger than the planner. So that the planner and the planner was uh, generating waypoints that we would consider infeasible and we just didn't train to do those correctly. So, um, what we're doing now is, um, um, so, you know, since the work presented uh, so far, is that we are using a uh, NRAX vehicle modeling library developed by by CMU NRAC based on uh, build uh, model robotic dynamic engine and calibrated to closer match uh, M-Razor vehicle. So we trained the controller using neural Lapinov techniques uh, by the team at UCSD. And we also trained the controller um, uh, to still do what it can when it uh, uh, when it's given an feasible waypoint, even if it cannot hit the waypoint perfectly, but at least uh, do the, the best it can. And, um, and then uh, last September, we tried the new controller um, on the real vehicle and it actually worked really well. And so now we, the next step is to update the proofs and we're happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Stefan and Alexi. Um, is there a quick question from the audience? There was one in the Q and A chat, but this was answered by, um, Stefan, as far as I saw, yes. Okay, I have one or perhaps two quick questions. Um, the first thing is I can imagine that in such a setting, you you do have um, a lot of uncertainty, right? So for instance, I mean, sure. um, if you work perception-based, you will have measurement noise. You will not be have your states perfectly predicted as you, I think, assume it now. Or there may be process noise if you have some, I don't know, some weather conditions or whatever, the actuators are not correct. So are you also looking to these directions or are you keeping these things more deterministic right now? Yes, I mean, the, uh, the, the models we're currently looking at include a noise where, um, uh, where, yeah, the value you get from the sensors are not necessarily the true value. But you can potentially, if you um, 
if you uh, you can extrapolate from the model and from series of observations so to more accurately estimate the true values and that's also part of the model okay yeah makes sense and um, a very quick question so um i mean you have of course uh, safety conditions right you don't want to crash or drive off road or something so have you compared this work to um there are a lot of approaches on reinforcement learning, safe reinforcement learning on continuous state spaces. So have you have you looked into these and perhaps compared? Uh, well, the, 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 this is heavily related. So there's uh, some of these neural Lapinov techniques by UCSD TM um, uh, are actually focused on um, 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 uh, on assuring um safety but one challenge is that a lot of these techniques they guarantee safety in the limit they don't guarantee safety for any actual neural network that you train for a finite amount of time and in those cases you still want the proof yeah of course there are different flavors of, of safety and right. okay well thank you very much and thanks for the great talk by both of you